Hello friends, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to knit a hat. The hat we're knitting today is going to have a two by two rib stitch brim, and we are going to be using circular needles for this project. So if you're interested in learning how to make a cute hat like this, keep watching. For this project, you're going to need some circular needles. I've got this 12 inch long cable and six millimeter short knitting needles. You could do this on a longer cable and different size needles, but this knitting in the round is what we're gonna be doing for this one, so you do need a cable for this one. It won't work on just straight knitting needles. You're also going to need some yarn. I wanted to go for a chunky knit, so I stranded up three different yarns together, a pink, a fuchsia, and a purple. All are wool. Nope, that's not true. I've got one strand of cotton and two strands of wool here, and together, they make a number five, maybe even a number six weight chunky yarn. But you go ahead and use whatever you have on hand. I'm doing this hat as a stash busting project. You'll also need some scissors as well as a yarn needle for our drawstring method top and to weave in the ends. So gather your supplies and let's jump in. For this project, I'm gonna be casting on 72 stitches with the long tail cast on method. To know how much tail you actually need for a project, you're gonna to wanna to wrap the yarn around the needle as many times as the number of stitches you plan on casting on. 72 stitches is gonna be a good size for most adult heads. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 72. And then you'll know how long your tail needs to be. I have already done so and I've marked the spot where I need to begin casting on my stitches. Let me zoom you in for our cast on. We're gonna begin with a slip stitch. That is how I start all of my knitting projects. With a normal slip stitch, you would pull the stitch tight and that will be your slip knot. For this one, we're not going to pull it tight. I've got my working yarn off to the left and my tail off to the right. I'm going to create a loop and twist it over itself so that I have an X. Then I'm gonna put my fingers into that hole and grab the working yarn through. Then I'll pull on the tail end till it's just almost snug, not quite all the way tight. And then I'm gonna put my needle into the hole and tighten it down just a little bit more. And now that slip knot represents our first stitch. For the next stitches, all of the rest of the stitches, I'm going to grab the tail, loop it around my finger, just like so, hook it over the needle, wrap the yarn the working yarn around the other way, the other direction. So I went counterclockwise here, loop around counterclockwise, and then I'm coming clockwise with the working yarn. And then I'm going to put that loop over the needle and draw it tight. Not too tight though, just snug enough. You want movement on your needle. So there's my first stitch. And then again, grab the yarn, Create a loop on your finger. Put the loop over the needle like so. Clockwise with the working yarn. And then pass that same loop over the needle and pull nice and snug. Let me show you a little quicker. Just like that. This is the yarn tail and this is the working yarn. So this is the yarn that's attached to the full ball of yarn. Loop the yarn around, hook it over, clockwise with the other hand, and pull. Just like this. This is the method that I was taught growing up for how to cast on for knitting. So this is the method I use. There's lots of different methods for casting on and you can search tons of videos on YouTube for how to do different types of cast ons. Some use a crochet hook for extra help. Some of them are just really crafty and creative, but this is the one that I know. So this is the one that I am showing you today. This is the long tail cast on. So I am going to cast on just like this, 72 stitches. So that slip stitch was number one, and I'm gonna do 71 additional stitches with this exact same method. And 71, 
and 72. Now the next step in this process is to join our round. We're gonna be working in the round for this one. So first we're gonna make sure that the round here, the row is not twisted. We want it to all be lining up nice and straight. So you might have to twist it around to make sure, but just make sure all of the stitches are on one side all the way around, just like that. Once you've made sure that all of the stitches are not twisted, we're gonna put the working yarn and the yarn tail side into the right hand. And then the left hand for me is gonna be where we start working. So I'm gonna drop the tail, make sure the tail is out of the way so I don't accidentally start knitting with the tail end. And then with our working yarn, I'm gonna put that into my left hand. Now we're going to begin knitting. We're going to start with the first stitch on the knot tail end using the working yarn that is attached to the tail end. And that way we're going to begin working in the round. Let me zoom in for this because we are going to be doing two different stitches for the brim of this hat. All right, so for this project, we're going to be doing knit two, purl two for our ribbed stitch. Now I've got the end with the no tail in my left hand and the working yarn in my left hand and then the tail end in my right hand. We're going to start with knit stitches. I'm holding my yarn parallel to my work with my last three fingers and then the yarn passes behind my pointer finger and up over top of it. And that's how I hold my yarn for knit stitches because it keeps a good tension. For a knit stitch, we're going to be going from the front to the back diagonally behind our stitch. Then counterclockwise, we're gonna wrap the yarn around the back needle. Then we're gonna pull the front needle over the back needle and then pull that needle out. And now the stitch is on the other needle. Hopefully that made sense. And then I'm gonna do that a second time. So insert the needle into the stitch diagonally behind, yarn over counterclockwise and then we're gonna pass the previous stitch there over and pull that left needle out. Now we've got two knit stitches and we've begun our round. You can see now it's all connected. Something you can do is put a stitch marker here if you wanna maintain where your round begins and ends, but for me, it's pretty visible. So I'm going to not bother with that at this moment. Now, the next stitch we're gonna do is a purl stitch. This one is a little bit different. It's basically the exact opposite of a knit stitch. So for a knit stitch, the yarn is behind the work. For a purl stitch, we put it in front of the work. Now, for a knit stitch, we insert the needle behind the stitch. For a purl stitch, we insert the needle in front of the stitch, just like this. So we're gonna insert the needle in front of the stitch then we're going to pass the yarn around, still working counterclockwise. And then we're going to pull the left needle out so that the stitch is on the right needle. So the right needle diagonally in front of the stitch, working yarn wraps around the right needle counterclockwise. The right needle pulls that loop through and then we pull out the left needle. And now that's two purls. And then we're gonna do two knits. So insert the yarn first, move the yarn back to the behind the work, insert the needle diagonally behind the stitch, yarn over, pass the left needle over the right needle, and then pull the left needle out. Insert the right needle diagonally through the back of the stitch, yarn over, pass the left needle over the right needle, and then pull the left needle out. There's two knits, two purls, and two knits. I know it's hard to tell at this moment, but I promise when the next round begins, it'll be so much easier to see. Now we're gonna do two more purls. So I'm gonna pull the yarn in front of the work, insert the needle diagonally in front of the stitch, yarn over, pull the stitch over and then pull the left needle out. Then insert diagonally in front of the next stitch, yarn over, pull the stitch, pull the needle over the previous stitch and then pull the left needle out. Now we've got two purls. Now we'll put the yarn back behind the work, insert the needle diagonally behind the work, yarn over, 
put the stitch over top of itself and pull it off of the left needle. So basically we're moving the stitch from the left needle to the right needle, but we're also adding a loop of yarn in the process. And that's a knit stitch and a purl stitch. These are the two basic stitches you need when learning knitting. I hope I did them justice and made it easy for you to understand. At this point, I am going to repeat knit two, purl two, all the way around for this first round of stitches. It might be a little snug in places if your cast on was too tight. I'm noticing some of my cast on stitches were a little snug, so my stitches, my first round of stitches is a little bit snug, but that's okay. It'll stretch out as we knit up the hat. I'm gonna zoom through these knit two, purl two, stitches on my first round and I'll meet you at the end of round one to show you what it's looking like and I'll show you what we're gonna do to continue forward with our beanie. All right I'm just coming up to the end of my first round here. I'm in my last two purls so I'm going to put the yarn in front of the work, diagonally come through the stitch, yarn over and then move the stitch to the other needle. And there we go. And now I'm back at the beginning of my round. Because we did 72 stitches, it's divisible by four. So two knits, two purls is a set of four, which means we finished on two purls and then we're back at the beginning where we start with knits. So guess what? We're gonna do another round exactly the same way. We're actually going to do quite a few rounds exactly the same way. Two knits followed by two purls, two knits, two purls. You can go as long as you want in this style for the beanie's uh, brim. You don't have to make it as wide as I'm gonna make it, but I'm gonna start with 10 rounds in this uh, two by two rib stitch, and I'm gonna see how that looks. I think I'll be going for about a two inch brim on this hat. But again, like I said, if you wanna go just for an inch, you do you. I'm gonna keep going in this exact same way, knit two, purl two, until I feel like my brim is wide enough. So for this next part, since I'm not doing anything new and we've already talked about how to do a knit two, purl two, I'm gonna zoom through this part. I'm gonna zoom through the entire brim. I'll show you a little time-lapse here so you can see me doing it. But I'm gonna zoom through this part and I'll meet you back when when I get to the point where my brim is wide enough to show you how many rounds it took and to show you what we're gonna do next. All right, I've just finished my 10 rounds and it looks so pretty. Doesn't that two by two rib look so good? Ugh, I did end up using a stitch marker so that I would know where my round ends. But now I've got about two inches of brim, which is how much I want for this hat. Now we're gonna switch into a regular knit stitch. We're not going to do any more purling for a while and we're actually going to do 20 rows, 20 rounds rather. We're just gonna do knits all the way around, no purls at all, just one knit stitch in every knit stitch all the way around for a total of 20 rounds. And I am going to show you a little up close how I'm doing my knits one more time and then we'll zoom through the rest of it. So I'll show you what it looks like when we're knitting into a purl. Let me zoom you in for that. So here is a purl stitch. We're gonna go into the purl stitch from the front to the back diagonally, yarn over counterclockwise, and then pull the stitch over the other stitch and pull the needle out. And then we'll be knitting two knits. There's one. There's two, and now we're at two purls, but we're gonna knit them, we're not gonna purl them. And I'm just gonna keep doing that all the way around until I've got 20 rounds of knit in stockinette stitch, which is what it's called when you work just the knit stitch in the round, it's called the stockinette sit stitch. I'm gonna keep going until I've got 20 rounds of this. I'm just gonna zoom through it because it's just all the same stitch over and over again. But I'll see ya when I finish my 20 rounds to show you what we're gonna do next. Here I am at the end of my 20th round, it's the next day now, and it looks so pretty. Aren't those stockinette stitches so lovely? And and then the two by two rib. I think this is gonna be such a cute hat. And you can see it's a pretty wide brim. It'll be fitting any adult head truly. So now we're going to get into our decreases. So it's time to start tapering down. Let me just get to my first stitch of the row, which is this one here. <laughs> what is it, Rohan? 
And right here before my first stitch of the round, I'm gonna put a stitch marker here just so I know where the round ends. If you don't have a stitch marker, you can just tie a piece of yarn here so that you know where your round actually begins and ends. For our decreases, we're going to be doing sets of 18 stitches. We have 72 in the round, and if we divide 72 by four, we get 18. So we'll have four decreases throughout the round. The way we're gonna do the decreases is knit two together. So we've been knitting one stitch at a time like this. For this, we're going to knit two together. So we're gonna insert the needle through two stitches at one time, and then yarn over, and complete the knit stitch. So there's two stitches, and then count out the rest to 18. Three, four, five, 17, and 18. Now we're gonna do another knit two together. So insert through both stitches and complete a knit stitch. Ugh, it's a little snug, but it works out and then continue. So there's two stitches there and we're gonna do 16 additional stitches for a total of 18. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, 18. And then another decrease. So knit two together. And then we're gonna do another 16 stitches because there's the two plus an additional 16 equals 18 total. So one, two, three, four, five, and 18, and then we'll do another knit two together, and then another 16 stitches, and that's gonna bring us back to the beginning of our round. So there's one, two, and 16, and there we go. So there's our first round of decreases. We've got four decrease stitches here. For the next round, so there was 20 rounds of stockinette, so we did a decrease for 21. Now for round 22, we're just gonna knit around. So no decreases in round number 22, just knit one time in each stitch around. I'll meet you at the end of round number 22. All right, here I am at the end of round number 22. Just gonna get to where my stitch marker is. And we can see the first decrease right here. See where the two stitches become one. And then we've got one round after that that is just one regular knit stitch together. So this is the last stitch here. And now we're at the beginning of the round again. For round 23, we're gonna do another round with decreases in it. So I'm going to knit two together for the first two stitches. One, two, and then we're gonna to count to 15. One, two, three, 14, and 15. And after 15 stitches, we're back at another decrease. So you can see the two stitches here merge into one right here. And then we've got our next round that we did with just one knit in each stitch. So for the next two stitches, we'll knit two together. So it's groups of 17 at this point. The first two and then 15 stitches after that for a total of 17 stitches in each little grouping. I'm gonna do that all the way around where every time I come up to where a decrease was, you can see the next one is right here. See, two rounds become one right here. So I'm gonna do that every time I come up to a decrease, which will be, I'll put knit two together, then knit 15, knit two together, then knit 15, until I get back to the beginning of the round. And that is what I'm gonna be doing for round number 23. I think I'll just zoom through round number 24 because it is just going to be a round of knitting with no decreases. So round number 24, I'm just gonna zip through it because it is knitting one time in each stitch all the way around. So I'll meet you at the end of round number 24 to show you what we're gonna do for round number 25. Here I am at the end of round number 24. To put my last stitch in. And now for round number 25, we're gonna do another round with decreases. So now you can see these two de decreases. Here's two rows becoming one. And then up here, here's two rows becoming one. So we're gonna be doing that again. We're gonna put the first two stitches together, knit two together. And then we're gonna knit 14 stitches after that. One, two, three, and 14. And now you can see we're back at one of those decreases. So we're gonna do knit two together. 
And we're gonna do the same thing all the way around, knit two together, then knit 14, knit two together, then knit 14, knit two together, then knit 14, until we get back to the beginning of the round. Now, from this point on, we're actually gonna be doing the same sort of decrease. So, for round number 26, we're going to knit two together, then knit 13, knit two together, then knit 13, all the way around. Then for round number 27, we'll knit two together, then knit 12, knit two together, then knit 12, all the way around. Then for round number 27, knit two together, then knit 11, knit two together, then knit 11, all the way around. Then for round number 28, knit two together, then knit 10, knit two together, then knit 10, all the way around. Then for round number 29, knit two together, then knit nine, knit two together, then knit nine. And we're gonna do that all the way until we have knit two together and then knit eight. So we're gonna go all the way up to round number 30 in this exact same decrease, and that is gonna taper our hat to the top of our hat. I'm gonna zoom through this because it's the exact same style of decrease. We're just gonna knit two together and then decrease the number of stitches between the knit two togethers every single row. And it'll be easy to figure out where to decrease because there are already decreases there. So every time you come up to a decrease, that's where you're gonna be knitting two together. Easy peasy. So I'll see you at the end of round number 30 and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. All right, so I've gotten to the point where there's eight stitches between each decrease. You can see if I pull the needles a little bit how it's tapered up like a hat now. So I've decided I'm actually gonna go another three rows. This is row 30. I'm gonna go up to row 33 with the same decreases. So I'm gonna go until I have only five stitches between each decrease. So I'm gonna knit two together, then knit seven, knit two together, then knit six, knit two together, then knit five. Three more rounds with the same decreases, just so that it's a little bit taller before I bind off this hat. So let's do it. Let me just show you where I'm at before I zoom through the rest of my decreases. You can see all these rows of decrease here, and I'm gonna start my new row, my new round rather, uh, with a knit two together. Again, the knit two togethers are a little snug. I'm still getting the hang of that. And then after that, knit two together, I'm gonna have seven left here. One, two, six, and seven. Ugh. There we go. And now I'm at another decrease. So I'll knit two together and then knit seven. And in the next row, I'll knit two together and then knit six. And then in the row after that, I'll knit two together and then knit five. And I will meet you back at the end of round number 33 when I've got five stitches between each decrease. I'm gonna zoom through the rest of this because it's getting a little snug and I'll see you when I get there. All right, I've made it to where I have five stitches between each decrease. So decrease, one, two, three, four, five, and then a decrease. These will stop looking stretched out when they are actually casted off. So now it's time to cast off and let me show you how we're gonna do that. So I'm going to knit the first stitch and then I'm gonna knit the second stitch. Oh, it's a little tight because there are so few stitches right now. And then I'm going to take the first stitch we knitted, the first stitch of the round, and I'm gonna put it over top of the second stitch we knitted. Oh, if I can do it here, just like, oh, just like that. And now we have one stitch and one stitch cast it off. Then we'll knit the next stitch and then we'll pass the previous stitch over top. Now we have two stitches casted off and one on the needles. Now I'm gonna just put all these other stitches off the needle to make it a little easier for me to work. Now I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna knit one stitch and then pass the previous stitch over. This is how you cast off from knitting. Knit a stitch, pass the previous stitch over. Knit a stitch and pass the previous one over. And this is going to close up the edge and then we're gonna do our drawstring method that I do for all of my crocheted hats. We're gonna do the same method to put this hat together or to close up the top hole, which you will see in just a minute. Let me just zoom through the rest of this cast off and then I'll show you what we're gonna do after we've got all of the stitches casted off our needles. All right, here I am with my last two stitches. So I'll knit my last stitch 
and then I'll pass the previous stitch over and now I have one stitch on my needle. I'm gonna pull that stitch nice and wide and then I can pull my needles out. And now I'm going to get a nice long tail here and I'm gonna cut my yarn. And then I'm just gonna pull that tail all the way through to finish off that cast off. So now that that's done, we can see all of the decreases on the hat. And you can see it hasn't entirely closed up the hat. There is a hole in the top, and we're gonna close that up with our drawstring method. You can see those four decreases on each row. Let me put it right up at the top so you could see it. We've got those four decreases around the round, and now we have to close up this circle. So I'm gonna use my yarn needle now, just like this, and I am going to double up the thickness of the yarn. So I'm gonna fold the yarn so that I've got twice the thickness and a little tail at the end here. So if you lay it down on top of itself, you want a little tail additionally. Now what I'm gonna do is weave in and out of the top round, the top last round here. So here is where the tail is coming out. We're going to insert the needle down through our first stitch, which is the last decrease here. It's actually here. I know there's a big gap, but once we close it, that will close up as well. So we're going to insert the needle down through that space and just pull it all the way down. And you can see the tail sticks out here. Don't worry, it's supposed to. And then we're going to come up through the next stitch, just like that. And then we're going to go back down through the next stitch, and then we're going to come back up through the next stitch. We're gonna do that all the way around. Down through one, up through the next. Down through one, up through the next. Until we get back to the beginning of the round. So now that we've made it back to the beginning, we're gonna turn the hat inside out. We're gonna turn the hat inside out and put these needles and the tail on the inside of the hat. I'm gonna pull this all to the other side. That's what the back of a stockinette stitch looks like, by the way. Isn't that pretty? All right, and now that it's on this other side, we're gonna lay it as flat as we can. We wanna twist these bits up. And then the last stick I'm gonna do here is gonna be to get this needle out on this side. All right, and now that it is inside out, I'm going to pull on the tail nice and tight. I'm just gonna sort of smoosh it around to make sure that this little hole gets closed up nice and tight, but with all of the seam on the inside of the hat, like this. And then once we've got it all the way closed up, I'll turn it back right side out to make sure that the top of the hat looks nice and finished. We don't want any of the seam showing on this end, which is good. We'll go back to this side, and then we can take that tail that we left, and we could tie a really nice tight knot just to finish that off really tight and nice. And then we can double knot it. And then what I like to do just for a little bit of extra security, and it also is basically weaving in my ends, is I just grab a couple of stitches on this sort of inner seam here, and I just sort of grab the stitches and pull tight, grab the stitches and pull tight, just to sort of cinch up that hole so that it looks nice on the inside, but also so that we know even if part of it comes apart in 10 years, I don't know. It's never gonna come apart, but the point is I just like to add extra security when I'm finishing off one of these. And there we go. And then I'll just tie that off. And now we can cut our yarn. And I'm just gonna cut it close to the top like that. Then I will take my last ends and weave them in. And there we go. And now we can turn the hat back right side out. And ta-da, it's a beanie. Look how cute it is. All right, I think we need to add a pom-pom. I have a couple extra small balls of yarn, so I'm gonna add them into my pom-pom just to get them used up. So to do that, I am going to combine them with my working yarn, and then I am going to wrap the yarn around my hand as many times as I want to <laughs> for it to feel like it's gonna make a nice poofy pom-pom. Now I'm just going to cut myself a nice long tail on my pom-pom. And then with that tail, I'm going to insert through the donut, the center of the donut, and just sort of serpentine it back around. So I'm gonna figure eight, come around the front and then stick it back in like that. Then I'm gonna pull that tight and then I'm gonna split my yarns up. So I'm gonna put the, what am I gonna do? These, this way, I'll split it like this. And then I'll put half on one side, half on the other. And I'm just gonna tie it nice and tight down the middle like that, as tight as I can get it. We don't wanna break the yarn, but want it nice and tight. And then I'll tie a double knot. Then I'm gonna turn it upside down 
and do the same thing on the other side just to secure this thing as much as I can. All right, now that that is secured on, I'm gonna cut all of these strands here. I'm gonna just stick my scissors into the middle of that pom-pom and go to town cutting them all up. We want all of these to be loose strings. All right, after we're all done with cutting the loops, then I'm gonna hold it by the longer bottom string and just cut around the pom-pom to round it out. All right, now that I've established that this pom-pom is sufficiently pom-pommy, nice and floofy, more or less. I mean, now I'm noticing that it's not symmetrical, hold on. All right, that's more or less symmetrical, pretty poofy. I am going to thread up my yarn needle with the tails from the end here. And I'm gonna thread it up with all of the pieces from the tails. And then I'm gonna insert the needle down through the top of the hat, like this. We'll pull that on nice and tight, just like this. And then with that pulled on, I'm gonna get that tail all the way off. And I'm just gonna insert it through the hat the bottom of the hat or the, I guess the top of the hat, the, the seam, whatever, the closure of the hat. I'm gonna insert the needle through a whole bunch of stitches. Erg, and I'm just gonna pull it all the way through, nice and tight. Then from a different point, I'm gonna come up through the bottom of the hat or the top of the hat. You know what I'm trying to say. Just like this, my tail. And then I'm gonna insert that needle through the center of the pom-pom just to add a little extra security on that pom-pom, just through the center like that, pull that tail through, and then on the other side, come back down through the hat, just like that. And now that pom-pom is good and secure, and then I'll just get this tied on. So I'll insert through a bunch of other stitches at the top of the hat until I can tie off ugh, this end for final security. And there we go. Then I'm just gonna tie a knot at the end of my string just to add a little extra final security here. Tie that down and then tighten it right up there. And then I'm gonna trim my tails. And now we have a hat with a cute little pom-pom on it. Now let me get this area cleaned up before I show you the final reveal for our cute little hat. You ready for this? Look at this freaking hat. Oh, look at it. Look at this hat. Are you kidding? Oh, look how cute this hat turned out. Look at the little pom-pom on top. You can see where we did those decreases now. They've got these pretty lines and the lines are like a little thicker on one end where the decreases are. That beautiful two by two ribbed beanie. Oh, ribbed brim rather. I feel like this could be a slow hat if you wanted it to, but you could also just wear it right on top of your head. And if you have a smaller head, you could just flip up that brim and then it's a teeny weeny beanie. How cute. Gosh, I love it. Okay, let's do the overhead shot. <laughs> Ta-da, here it is. What do you think, friends? Oh, it's so cute. It turned out amazing. I love how the decreases look. They look like an intentional detail, like a little swirl on top of the hat. Do you see how pretty those look? And the little pom-pom adds just a little little extra bit of whimsy. The two by two rib turned out perfect, exactly how I wanted it to look. And folded up, it looks great if you've got a smaller head, but for me, I like it folded down just like this. This will fit most adult heads. If you've got a super huge head, look how much stretch you get out of this. By doing multiple yarns all together, it created this really dense stitch. Still has, again, a ton of stretch, but really a beautiful mix of colors. Very, very cute and whimsical. What do you think though? Let me know in the comments down below if you're gonna try knitting yourself a hat. Highly recommend it. It is a very fun project that does not take too long at all. I think this in total probably took three hours, so it's a little bit longer than a crochet hat, but still, totally worth it. I'm really happy with this hat. And hey, thank you to everyone supporting the channel this month. Here is the list of everyone who is supporting. If you would like to show your support, I've linked in the description down below all the ways that you can show your support. But if you don't wanna do any of those, click the like button subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, reply to someone else's comment. All of those ways, great ways to show your support and to let the algorithm know that you should see our videos. That's all I've got for you today, friends. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.